As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined, as always, by the one and only Shooter McGavin. Shoots, what's up, dude? Huge week for the boys. Big week. Massive week. And it's been a while since we've said that, honestly. We've kind of like, not that we haven't been growing, but in the beginning, I feel like we were like, great week this week. Yeah. So much action. Now we're just kind of used to it, but this was actually a huge week for us. And uh, we're really excited to bring you a couple things over the next couple of weeks. Some interviews we can't quite talk about yet, but... One interview we can talk about is Ryan Bailey. We did an interview with Ryan Bailey yesterday. It was an absolute blast. And that's what you're going to listen to today. We're going to do a quick Rose and Thorn. We're going to do our VPR recap. But then we're going to dive in with Bailey. And it was, I had a blast, dude. What about you? Yeah, no, it was, it was really fun. We, uh, we kind of meshed really early on. Yeah. A lot of the same opinions. It was cool to kind of pick his brain because he's been doing it for so long. Yep. And just kind of pick up what he's putting down for us so picking up what he's putting down yeah, we're absolutely. buying what he's selling no i mean we all meshed really well we've we've heard from zach told us uh a lot of people have kind of said like you guys need to hook up with ryan bailey we're actually all on the same network cloud 10 so it worked out really well but um you guys will be listening to that shortly yep but scoots and i just got off the golf course we're literally still in our golfing attire so for those of you on youtube this is what we look like when we golf adds to the big week for the boys we got out great weather and really feeling it, nice and loose. Yeah, I'm. We're we're in a good place. All right. It's it, like you said. I do remember in the beginning, like every week's like huge week, huge week, and it was. We got kind of used to it, and I I think it's a good reminder not to get complacent. Like yeah. to still enjoy every moment, and still take it all in. Like we're so grateful for you guys and getting us to this point, and we can't wait to see what's next. But above all else, thank you to our listeners because without y'all. None of this is possible. It's been a long time since a good steel thank you rant, and we I, all appreciate it. I needed to, and, and like I, I texted you, and like I had a rough month. I didn't even realize it. Like I was, I was down. I was, I was depressed, and I texted you. I, I talked to Dev about it. You know, you don't really know until you come out of it. And like I was, I was three days out of it, and I was like, oh wow, I didn't realize that. And then I started to do my gratitude again. Started to look around, and be like, you know what? The podcast is great. Life's pretty great. I need to just take it all in, smile, and enjoy the weather. Lot to be thankful for nowadays, and I know there's people out there that are disappointed that we're not negative in the beginning. <laughs> a lot of comments this week about us being negative about stuff, but a lot of positivity out there right now. Yeah, do it. positive Peters. With that, let's get to our Kadar Sharif. <laughs> <laughs> our Rose and our Kadar Sharif. I'll start us off this week. And I'll start with our Kadar Sharif because it also I want to address this. So actually, you know what? You go first because I might have to rant a little bit. Okay, it's always good to schedule your rant. Not an angry time. rant. I'm gonna. I'm not. I don't want to be angry. So it's just gonna be a rant. But you go first. Okay. Cool. Um. So my first one <laughs> <laughs> is a. Uh, it could be a rose. Could be a thorn. Honestly, and I'll read it out, and then I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Okay. It comes from Patricia Smith three zero four six on TikTok. Yeah, comma, you two are decent men on the Sandoval thing. Now, is she actually calling us decent men or is the sarcasm not translating? The yeah, comma really kind of put me for a tailspin. That's that's an interesting one. Like, yeah, okay, you, you two are decent. Yeah, you guys are good. You guys can like, talk on this. Like, you don't know us, yeah, lady. You don't, you don't know who or we are. Or you do. And you, maybe you think that we're decent men. Then you definitely do know us. Otherwise, you don't know us, lady. That, wow, we got an ambiguous Rosie, Rosie Kate. Rosie Kate. I don't know. I think it's right down the middle. I would like to believe that she thinks we're decent men. I, I think so, too. So just to be safe, I'm going to do an actual rose. And this comes from Travel Love Wine. So proud of these men getting it with a heart face. And we're proud of you for traveling and loving wine. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. That sounds like a great <laughs> life. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to start with my rose. I usually start with my Kadar Sharif. And I'm starting with my rose this time because I want to address the next one. My rose is from Chris Ten Testever. Test ever. Chris Ten Test ever. Uh, <laughs> it's clearly Kristen, and I guess her last name's Testever. I don't know. Sure. But it's a whatever. Go with it. it. And she just comments, We see the jorts. So last week when I commented, A lot of jorts. Wearing action. the jorts. 
they noticed the jorts. So if you notice the jorts, go and buy yourself a pair of jorts. Join the craze. All right, let's make this a thing. 2023, the year jorts. Get your jorts, baby. Yeah, I saw a couple of uh, hashtag jorts trending on the, the last Instagram post. So, Oh, my God. Working. Oh, my God. Do you think we can sell jorts in the, in the shop? Sure. Do you think people would buy them? No. You don't think anybody? Shouldn't. Guys, guys, if you buy, if I put a pair of jorts up and I sell 10 pairs, We'll I put win. our faces on your ass, right over the like you know apple each bottom cheek. jeans. It'll just be our faces. It'll be each cheek will be a bro. Brav bro bottom jeans. Brav bottom jeans. George, sure. we'll cool. work on that. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, workshop, we'll, that one. we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. But here's my Kadar Sharif or my KRS. It was a review, and it's a two star review, and it says Lauren rules question mark. And says, for some reason, these guys seem to be obsessed with Lala from VPR. I mean, are there any other people on that show? Although they are constantly ripping on Lala, to be honest, it reads as little boys pulling the hair of the girl they have a crush on. They like to call her Lauren as if it's an insult. But do they realize that she often refers to herself that way as well? Unclear. They frequently seem to not really know what they're talking about, regardless of the show. But that's not going to stop them from mansplaining it to you. Wow. A lot of hate there. A lot of hate. A lot of hate. like a specific reason why you hate us. Obviously, you love Lala. Fine. Whatever. Love who you love. But the rest of it, damn. That could be a description for our show. Yeah. That's a (laughs) new bio. They never know what they're talking about, and they will mansplain it to you. Regardless of the show. The Brav Bros. Brav Bros. So here's my thing. I think that we do. I would like to think that we don't mansplain. I want to just say that we had a discussion about mansplaining, and I feel like we landed on two men talking about something is mansplaining, technically so. speaking, I guess, but not. I don't. I hope it doesn't come off in a condescending way. Now, to the Lala of it all, let me get this out there for everybody. I don't hate Lala. I've never hated Lala. I don't like the way she's handling things this season. Have I been a little over the top at times? Yes. I agree. I've gotten a little amped up. It's just frustrating to watch certain things where if she approached things with, uh, I've been through this, kind of like we saw last night. Yeah. I've been through this. You are not a mistress, which is ironic because she was. (laughs) If she'd taken that approach from the beginning, like, hey, I've been through this and maybe tried to like have a teaching moment or try to have a heart to heart or maybe just take a different approach instead of just like gaslighting and crucifying and like, going after the jugular that was that was and is my problem and that's my problem not just with her it's just she's the most outspoken so i think it's more of a target everybody on the show does this like nobody seems to remember where they came from what they've done in the past if they approach these situations with more of a pragmatic approach more of a i understand this i've done this before it took me a long time to recover i don't think you should go down this path not that they're entitled to do that but i think that's where my frustrations lied and they came out a little bit stronger than maybe I would have liked. That's fair. That's very well said, I feel like. Yeah. You mansplain the shit out of it. <laughs> um, no, I, I completely agree. Like, if we got more of what Lala was last night in the tail end of that conversation. Now, look, I actually kind of liked the fact that she was making fun of Raquel for being a mistress. Because that's obvious. Like, Raquel threw that in her face. She threw it right back. Thought it was funny. Yeah. And then was able to resolve it in an adult way. Which I thought was a huge step, and I was like, "What the hell?" Like, I did not expect her to do I this. Cheered. Maybe it was because you know they were by themselves. Fine, whatever. Should Raquel have gone over there right away on Lauren's birthday? No, absolutely. She shouldn't have been there. Certainly not. You know, talk to her a day after. But you know what? She wanted to get ahead of it, so there you go. She went right there, talked to her. I think what we got from that was great. If we could have gotten that, and she dropped that whole mean girl shit in Vegas, which by the way, she's still not taking responsibility for in that moment in September right. for her birthday. She's still not taking any sort of responsibility at all. And she was a dick. Whatever. Raquel deserves it now, but she didn't deserve it then necessarily. And I just think if we got a little bit more of that character, I'd be okay when she pops off of random things. Agreed. That's a really good point. I think I'd be more or less reactive to the outburst yeah. if i because saw we the... give these people grace like yeah, they are to. half of them are nuts and the like the aggressiveness and like just their general disposition <laughs> and just completely being blind to everything like those things happen like we understand that but if you're a good person sometimes we'll let you get away with that because that makes for good tv and we also understand like you can't try all the time that's a really good point yeah. well said well said there we go rose mansplaining uh. forever <laughs> 
But we don't want to waste any time. We want to get right to the business because we're going to get to the Ryan Bailey of it all um, because we want you guys to listen to all of it. It was an exceptional time. So let's just go through Vanderpump real quick. We recap everything else with Ryan. So let's start it out. Well, before you start it out, okay. let's plug. Plugs. Damn it, dude. One last Suck week. Suck at plugs. One last week until our live show next Thursday night, City Winery, 7 o'clock, Zach Peter. Get your tickets now if you haven't yet. We have a special surprise. I think we can announce it now. You can say it right now. Yeah. We will be joined by the one and only Dorinda Medley. We got Dorinda. It's She's huge. coming. Yep. Yeah, and we're going to make it nice. We are, because <laughs> we're not going up to Bluestone Matter. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, Dev loves Dorinda, yep. so I know all about Dorinda. I, New York was one of my first ones. I started with Vanderpump, as you know. Roni was my second dive in, so I am a Dorinda fan as well. I'm so excited that we get to sit down and chat with her. You guys get to meet her, buy a ticket. There's not a whole lot left. Yeah. You got no, you're six on days. Your last chance at this point. Yep. Six days to get a ticket. And I have a feeling with the Dorinda announcement, they're going to go pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So don't wait. If you're waiting for the week of the show, you might not get one. So buy one now. Come hang out with the bros and Zach Peter. It's a no filter night out, baby, featuring Dorinda Medley. Now let's get to Vanderpump. Yes. <laughs> we start out with a scene that I loved. I love this scene. Katie goes to Schwartz's to pick the dogs up mm -hmm. and walks in the door. He is fresh off of Mexico and making out with Raquel. Like this is still... Like a day or two later. I yeah, think. it's only a 48 hours removed yeah. max, right? And she goes to get the dogs and he sits down. And you can tell he's trying to fish a little bit. He's like making no like noises and talking baby talk to the dogs. Like clearly trying to like ease the tension. Katie's not paying attention to him at all. And he sits down. And he's like, oh, man, like this, just so frustrated. Like this, this bar, like everything's driving me crazy. And she's like, oh, that sucks. Bye. And there's bolts. Yep. Like, I love that. Like, fuck you, Schwartz. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like th the fact that he was fishing in the first place, the fact that he sat down and thought that he could have that conversation. You can't play dumb to this extent. Like you can play dumb to a certain extent for mm -hmm. sure. And people will give you that because you're Schwartz and that's who you are. But this is beyond, way beyond that. Like, yeah. ju dude, just fucking, like, either leave her alone or try to apologize or whatever you want to do. But don't just act like nothing happened. Because That's something worst. big happened and you're not taking ownership at all. You're just like, whatever. It, it's very clear to me that you're just a, kind of an asshole. Kind of an asshole. Yeah. He is an asshole. If you can look there, at yeah. this situation and not realize what you've done wrong. We watched the rest of the episode, him and Sandoval try to write this off as not a big deal. Like, why is everyone blowing this out of proportion? Because that was also, I didn't even think about it until Charlie said it, that was their 12th anniversary weekend. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of- Should they have gone out to dinner for it? No, but you know, it was. No, but he shouldn't have made out with somebody else when she was there. I don't care if you're in Mexico. I don't care if it's like- Even if she wasn't there, he shouldn't have made out. Absolutely not. Like it, It's just a bad fucking look, but it takes us right to the Charlie scene. And Charlie, once again, it continues to be an MVP this year, mm -hmm. immediately calls out Raquel. If we had more of this on the show, maybe there'd be less bullshit behind the scenes. If we need people to ho just hold your friends accountable- we we're watching yeah. across the board on Bravo shows of people saying the most outlandish shit and people getting in all of these crazy debacles and people, their friends stand by and watch this shit happen. Nobody says, hey, you look like an idiot. Knock it off. Instead, they are a party to it or they try to cover it up. More Bravo people need to take a note here and be like, oh, if you're my friend, this is how you be a friend. Flash over to Summer House, like, how Danielle tries to check Lindsay, that's not how it's done. Yep. Charlie goes at it with a very mellow approach. Look, I'm your friend. I'm here for you, but this was fucked up. This is a bad look, and I'm going to tell you that because I am worried about you and your reputation, and I think this was really shitty of you. I think you need to apologize. Like That's a friend. Yeah, that's a, that's a good friend, and Charlie has had a very good season because she's been the really the only logical one in all of this where she recognized what Lala, Katie, and Christina Kelly were doing to Raquel up in Vegas, and when they got to Havasu a little bit later, she knew what was going on. And then right afterwards, she's not taking Raquel's side. She's going right against it. So, like, she's being very logical on all of yeah. this. And maybe if we had, like, one or two more people that did that, it might be a little bit better for everybody else. But it seems like the illogical move, the dumb move, the really disrespectful move is taking over in this group. Every and that's what it always is. But, yeah. like, now it's just gotten so much worse. It's just so out of hand. So... I don't know. I, I really like that scene because you could even see in Raquel's face, like, what do you mean? Like, what, what did I do wrong? It's not like I'm going to date him. It's like, no, 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 you still did that. That's still wrong. It's almost like both her and Schwartz are the same. They don't view 
making out with somebody as anything wrong. But it's minimizing. Yeah. You're minimizing what it was. I just wanted to make out with somebody. I just made out with them. Like, like no, make dude. out with one of the other thousand people at the yeah. resort. Like, it's the person you made out with that's the problem. You know, yep. like, it doesn't matter if you're not with somebody. There's rules. There's, there's man code. There's women code. Like, yeah. this is a thing. You take care of your friends. You don't hook up with their exes. That's like standard. It's on the plaque. It's on the masthead. Yeah. Don't do that. I like we're, <laughs> we're doing the activity of completely ignoring the sand of all of it all right now. Yeah. Where we're just trying to do these things in a bottle. And I know people will always like have that hindsight and jump in and be like, why aren't you talking about sand of all with all this? Because we watched an episode where, yeah, later there's a lot oh of action, God, which we'll get to. But right in this instance, no, we're talking about Raquel and Schwartz. And I do want to shout out because I forgot to shout out last week. We love a good performance at a wedding, at a party, whatever. Mm. The people that were dancing with the mirror suits. Oh, I love that. Sick. That was such a cool so addition cool. With the to the fire wedding. in the background yeah. and the water, and it was reflect. Oh man, what a great time! It was a beautiful I need wedding. that. They, they did put them they did in a bubble right. in, a, in a pool and put some fire behind them. That's like whew. what was the pool bubble? Is that Jersey? Yeah, that was the love bubble. Yeah, the love Teresa's bubble. Party, oh yeah. Jesus, I forgot about that. I hope that woman got out of the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving right along, though. We get that quick cut with like Tom and Tom at, um, we get that quick cut of Tom and Tom at Schwartz and Sandy's and Brett fired their kitchen, which along with that, the whole kitchen staff left. It's just, it's an absolute nightmare. And Dev and I were talking about it. There's so many options that you could do to fill the kitchen for the time being. Hire a food truck for one uh, month. Yes. Like you're in LA. There is food you can probably get a food truck for way less than you're paying for rent at this point like at least subsidize a little bit two of them bitches put them out front and be like hey drinks in the house raise the prices by like 50 every brewery in the nation does that and they do fine yeah like if you want to make at least something so you're not just like pouring money out the door get a fucking food truck like it's so simple like there's this is how dumb they are they can't see past like oh there's other options like well it's just it's Schwartz is dumb it Sandoval just isn't even involved and the fact that, and like we can talk about this and then kind of get into like the Schwartz with uh, the meeting with LVP later but Sandoval lashing out at Brett while he's telling him all of this it's fucking this hysterical fucking, the emotion was so fake yep. like you went from zero to a hundred so quick with your stupid white nails like like dude Shut up. Yep. Like, you haven't been here. We know as an audience back then that you weren't there because you were doing the stupid tour. And he starts talking about his tour. And he's like, well, you know, I had that practice date like planned out. Like, who cares? Doesn't matter. Fucking cover up, band, You're dude. You're losing money. A million You're losing dollars. your mother's retirement fund. You're losing a million dollars. of your, Like, you are going broke doing this. And all you care about is cheating on your girlfriend and playing in a goddamn cover band. That sucks, by the way. If I borrowed 250k from my parents, and they asked where I was because the bar wasn't open, I was like, "Oh, I'm at band practice for a cover band." They would drive there, drag me out by my ear, and mm-hmm. take me to the restaurant to finish it. Yeah, like, it's insane that he thinks that he's in the right at all. But this just kind of goes to show you the mentality and psyche that is Tom Sandoval. He's so dumb. He's he's not even dumb. He's just like not he's involved, delusional, and completely out there. And then Schwartz is very dumb. The two of them together, they. I am surprised that it ever opened. It's dumb and dumber. Yeah. It's fucking dumb and dumber. But we get Tom, Ariana, and Katie chatting, and they're going over why Katie's upset because Tom is trying to defend what happened, and now we know why, right? Now we know what he's trying. He's trying to placate and make it seem okay or at least point the direction at Schwartz. Yeah, because there's guilt there. Correct. Well, that's not that big of a deal, right? Right? eh. Like, uh, I'm trying to test the waters here because I fucked Hooking up with (laughs) hell, like, you know, yeah, I I don't know if he fucked her at this point, but he definitely hooked up with her at this point. They definitely have had sex at this. There's no way they haven't had sex. You see the tension At some point, they definitely did, but I see what we were led to believe is that it happened right before Mexico. They hooked up and they kissed under the stars or whatever bullshit. And then, you know, maybe they fooled around a little bit in Mexico. What, whatever. I don't care. But for him, yeah, he's testing the waters. He's like, so specifically with Raquel, somebody making out with her, it's probably not that big of a deal, yeah, right? Right, like, right. You like, know? you'd be cool with it, right, Ariana? <laughs> like, she's blowing it out of proportion. Get the fuck out of here. And I love that Katie ends it with this, like, foreshadowing sentence. And I, I don't love it, like, oh, it was just like, wow, it really lands mm-hmm. because she goes, pray that no one ever does that to you. And seeing her say that, and then seeing Ariana right next, I'm like, oh, my God, that is heartbreaking. Yeah. That is absolutely heartbreaking because not only is that going to happen, it's currently happening as we're watching this mm-hmm. shit. And this is when I think the show, it's going to take a dark turn. 
Yeah, it has to go now, I imagine. After what Allie said. Yeah, like things are like, starting to come out of the woodwork. Let's yep. get into it. Yep. We Allie outs him for being at Abby. I'm so upset that they didn't get that on camera. It was at Lala's apartment, and she we didn't hear about it until Allie's confessional. Yeah. But she said, you know, I went to go see Lala, Katie, I think Christina Kelly was there or whoever, and sat down and told them this. Yep. I would have loved to have seen Lala's face because I want to know where she lands on it then. We know where she is now. Yeah. Acting like she knew the whole time. But at that point, like, I want to see that interaction. I'm, I'm so disappointed that it wasn't on camera, but whatever. I am too. It might have. Who knows? Like, that, I don't. I'm curious what they did. They would have get absolutely they played think. that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep trucking along. We got to get to Ryan Bailey. But this is kind of the first evidence i think if you want to look for like easter eggs that you really really get that there's some weird tension i mean obviously there was the potential ass grab in mexico was yeah. the first inkling but this one this scene was so slimy to me like i did not enjoy watching it i didn't like any of the three of them in this scene at all because mm -hmm. rachel tries to play the the hurt sad like woe is me character but it's like dude you're hooking up with him right now so yeah is it harsh to hear that somebody called you a whore like yeah that's a rough thing to hear i understand getting upset about that however for you to act like you're this upset about the whole situation when you knowingly are hooking up with this man who is in a nine-year relationship like you start to piece things together with rachel and it's like she tries to garner sympathy all season and this is where i will play the hindsight game it's just mm -hmm. because the character that she's playing in confessionals with what she's saying about finding herself, learning a lot about herself, being comfortable with who she actually is. It's like, okay, well, that's you saying you're comfortable with being this woman that is happy to cheat with another guy. Like, that's fucked. Yeah. So it, it's, again, we don't like to play hindsight. We like to be in the moment. But now that the worlds are finally colliding, this scene was off-putting to me. And the one thing that I want to say but it goes, she doesn't have a bad bone in her body. And I looked at Dev and I go, she's got one bad bone in her body. I think LVP said that. Is that who LVP? I think so. Yeah, she said Raquel doesn't have one bo bad bone. Oh, no, no. In her body. Sandoval said that. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. And then I said, he's got one bad bone in her body. <laughs> Sandoval's boner. <laughs> Dude, one word too far, probably. We understood what you were getting. I was just clarifying. Yeah, no, I, I was clarifying. Um, no, it, it was definitely very, like, cringy to watch. And it, it always is, but. I don't know. It's just so fucking weird. And whatever's going on with her and the Toms at that point, like the overlap is, it's dirty. It's grimy. We don't want to deal with it. But you can kind of see like when Raquel is talking about like not wanting to do that. And obviously, like you said, like we have the benefit of hindsight. I don't believe her at all. And no. it's not because of what we know. I'm just watching her. I'm like, you're just not being genuine. Like, No, it seems all, You're like, genuine all. when you say you have no idea what you're doing and you're just trying to find your way. Get that. That makes sense. Yep. But the rest of it, it's like, you don't believe that. You don't care if somebody's dating this person or that person. When she talks to Oliver later, I'm like, there's no remorse there. It was weird that you called his ex-wife. I don't know why Sheena was on board with that one. That's kind of odd. I keep see. It at a, keep it at 100 and just fucking text back and forth. You don't want to have that conversation. Well, clearly that was production. That's a well, we didn't even hear because what's her name, speaker. Samantha. We didn't even hear Samantha's voice. She probably didn't sign off on it. I, that's what I was like, imagining, too. Yeah. Speaker. That's fucked up. I yeah. didn't want to be on blast like that. Well, wow. with yeah, true. <laughs> but with that, I mean, she did tag Raquel in posts, and like in this instance, we're assuming that she had no idea that he was married, mm -hmm. and like they were still. Trying I to give her that. I definitely yeah, give her I, that. I just I don't think she that. feels bad after she hears it. I think she only thinks about herself. It's yeah. I think she's she's seems to be more concerned about what her reputation is going to yes. look like after this Absolutely. than the actual act of being party to something schemey. Yes. Like, that's what I get. She does not feel, I don't think she feels bad for Samantha. She only talks about herself and then immediately worries about what Lala will think. That's a good like, point. You don't, you don't see any remorse. She wants to clear her name with Samantha, doesn't end up doing that, still wants to clear her name with Oliver. And she says, yeah, you know, that just really sucks that, like, you would lead me like that. Like, she, again, does not care. No. So, you know what? She only thinks about herself, and that's what gets her into trouble with this. Yeah, and it kind of takes us towards the end. I mean... We're at Lala's party, and she's been talking a lot of shit about the Oliver situation, which I was getting a little flustered just because I was like, this this situation is actually identical to what you went through with Randall. You claim to not have known that he was still married. You got blindsided by it. Like, that was your experience. So when she's sitting there shitting on Rachel, and I'm like, this is literally the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is one time you actually can have some grace, 
And I was so fired up. We already talked about it. But when she actually gives her some grace and is like, hey, I've been there. I know it sucks. And I, the worst part is he's going to get off scot-free and you're going to have to deal with this yeah. shit. And I'm sorry. And she ends it with, by the way, you're not a mistress. And it's like, mm, she is yeah, though. Right now she yeah, is. But she it, is. it was like, I, I agree. The early factors of that where Lala was like laughing and cackling at the table yeah. and everything, clapping her hands. That was uncomfortable. It's like, all right, too much. Just fucking relax. Like you are actually invested in someone else's demise at this point, And you're getting way too much satisfaction from it. Like way too much. Yeah. Just fucking, you can be happy about it because it is like ironic that she called you a mistress last week. And now here she is. You can laugh about that. You can make a joke about that. Fine. As long as you come back the way that you did. So I'm even extending the grace to that and saying, I will ignore that behavior before Ra Rachel Raquel got there. Yeah. Afterwards is what I do want to focus on. And that was really nice because, again, you have more than enough leeway there to make a couple of jokes because of what Raquel said to you. As long as you come back and you say, look, you're not a mistress and you actually have a heart to heart with her. That was pretty cool. That I didn't was, expect Lala to do that. I didn't either. At all. And, and it was kind of between that and then the, the Apple review. I was kind of like, all right, maybe I got a little jacked up. Maybe I came no. a little hot. No, no. no. She's, she's had a rough season. Okay. This is a little redeeming, but this I do very, think it was really... It was very redeeming. I thought that Rachel was going to try to go to the party. I thought she was going to be like, I can I come in? around and go too. Or yeah, just yeah. go in, not even ask. At just walk she, right in. At least she realized I need to go home and not yeah. be a part of this. Uh, yeah. Like, there's still a Give lot. That. Because Katie's sitting in there. Like, you still <laughs> yeah. did that. Like, let's not forget. Like, she's like, oof. I didn't even think about that. That's, I, that's what point. I'm saying. She's like, oof, oh, dodge the bullet was, with all of her. Schwartz was at home taking a bath. I didn't need that. I didn't need to see Schwartz in the bath. did not need to see the pasty just both of the Toms need to fuck off and I would give Schwartz some credit for calling out Sandoval but he doesn't deserve any credit because he's because he immediately delusional. backed down he immediately he always backs down like yeah. he has these moments where he'll snap and go off and then he pulls it back and reigns it in because well, he's Lisa a big, also did giant pussy yeah and Lisa also didn't back him up Lisa was just like I can't do this like you guys are unhinged at this point well Lisa's like Relax. I put my name on the line now because uh -huh. I'm involved and I'm not going to let you guys Christ. fight yeah you yeah. guys can't even figure this out you're telling me that he's not here ever he's at band practice and getting, his nails, getting his nails done and then Tom doesn't Sandoval doesn't even say in his um, confessional like, oh, no, I wasn't doing any of that. Like, Schwartz is mistaken, blah, blah, blah. I'll try to clear his name. He made a joke about it. He said, He's I'm like, not going to show up with grubby nails. Yeah, grubby nails. And I, I've had this band practice scheduled for weeks. Like, who cares, dude? You can't have grubby nails with that grubby-ass porn stash. Yeah. Like, get the fuck Jesus. out of here, buddy. What a loser. Well, that does it for us in this segment. Keep on listening because right now we got the Brav Bros with Ryan Bailey to recap Jersey, Summer House. He talks about some VPR. Enjoy. What's up, bros? We are here with a very special guest, Ryan Bailey from So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey, a fellow Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast member. Uh, Ryan, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm doing I'm I, I'm doing good, man. I can this is the, the universe will be exploding. There's three straight dudes on a podcast. We're finally, <laughs> finally, men are gonna get their say. We're finally having <laughs> no idea. Yeah. This is so exciting. I'm thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, and for those of us that might be a little confused, we're not going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about Bravo. Well, that, that's the sad thing is that I couldn't talk about sports if I wanted to. That's where I differ from you guys is that's why, I mean, like, I think that's what sets you apart. I feel like you guys are real men. I feel like people, <laughs> uh, people, you know, like, I, I mean, people are genuinely surprised. Like, I know nothing about sports. I have tons of guy friends that I'll watch sports with just to have camaraderie. But yeah. then the pandemic happened, and that just wiped that out entirely. And now it's nonstop reality shows 24-7. Yep. I appreciate the honesty, and I also appreciate the fact that you're willing to go and watch the sports with your friends just for that camaraderie. But it sounds like that's gone by the wayside since the pandemic. So maybe, you know, you can watch sports with us. You can be a Phillies fan. You can no. be an Eagles fan. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm for hire in terms of sports teams. I will, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm a fair weather fan. I'll go any which direction. The only thing I have real opinions on are housewives and van. These are my sports. That's what I always say. There you go. Like, how my, how my guy friends will yell and scream about sports. I'll do the same thing about Vanderpump rules and I'll do mm -hmm. the ins and outs. And I'll be like, they need a ref on this play. <laughs> I do a lot of sports analogies for somebody that doesn't fully understand sports. That's great. That's just, uh, we actually do the same thing. We we draw a lot of parallels. I feel like there are a 
ton of similarities between sports and the Bravo world. Like all of these ladies, they're looking for a contract next year. You got to perform. You got to put out numbers. You don't get asked Ooh, back. Well, they're in the off season. They're yeah. training. Them oh, yeah. season. Sometimes they're training too much. Like you can tell these people are getting like they're talking heads in order. And that's where I think like it's like it ceases to be reality, especially for the housewives nowadays. Like it's just so structured i it's like between sports training and training to like audition for saturday night live yeah yeah no steel steel and i talk about it all the time something like ultimate girls trip we call like an off-season tournament going on there to see who's going to be able to come up to the big leagues and it helps us a lot because we refer to things as off-season we refer to things as off-season tournaments getting ready and getting that next contract. We do it all the time. And I'm sure our listeners are probably tired of hearing it, but it helps our dumb <laughs> brains work it out. So, you know, we've actually gotten a lot of feedback from people that have been like, thank you guys for all the sports references. You make me sound really good in front of my husband because like, <laughs> I think somebody was watching an Eagles game. It was in the playoffs and they dropped the line about one of the players like, oh yeah, like Jalen Hurts needs to do X, Y, or Z. And her husband was like, what? And she's like, mm -hmm. and she commented like, thank you guys. I looked really cool in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the girls trip is fascinating though, because you're right. Like you see then, uh, you know, even like Brandy Glanville, you're like, oh man, she took herself out for the season. Like she's now unable to compete in any future housewives events because <laughs> of whatever shook out with uh, Caroline from Jersey. But you see these things and you're like, this is wild because now there's a whole ecosystem of these people that just depend on bravo and a reality show paycheck and it's so funny because it's like now people are just by design wanting to stay on these shows and get to another show rather than just kind of live a life that they can potentially document for bravo yeah yeah it, it's kind of like branched out to what you just said they're, they're grasping and clawing at any chance to get back on the screen ultimate girl strip sure vanderpump sure whatever i got whatever you got for me i'm in so i think the other interesting fact in reference to like the off season social media seemingly in the past like year or two with the housewife shows i think it really took shape with like beverly hills last season the interaction between those on the show and the fans at home has been insane like they yeah. are way too clued in to like they comment back like they they start shit with people that they don't even know like mm -hmm. it's, it's yes. yes but that's the same as the nba like i don't know if you follow the nba but nba players have like burner accounts and they'll like clap back all the time <laughs> so yep. no it's, it's the the ecosystem that all of this has created is really stunning because you know 16 or 7 16 seasons ago when o oc premiered you know, we, that was the first, uh, they, they premiered on the first day that Twitter, uh, went live, but they, you know, Twitter didn't really take hold for like another couple of years. And now it's nowhere near what it is today, but they did not have to compete with social media. It wasn't a part of the whole ecosystem like it is now. So it is like housewives on steroids now, because you not only have the show, but you have the second show, which is all the social media, which now is more entertaining and more of the moment than sometimes the actual show is. And that's what's really scary to deal with because you're like, how is Bravo going to lasso this and try to control it somewhat? Because we know more information right now about everything happening in Vanderpump Rules than we're going to see in tonight's episode. We right. already know know what we're potentially going to see plus we know 80 moves beyond that so how is bravo going to learn to not squash it but but capitalize and use it to their advantage and i don't know sometimes i wonder if it, that ship has just sailed you can't put something back in the box once it's completely out yeah and, and i think that like obviously they had to come back with vanderpump specifically because we need to see that unfold on screen we can't just watch all the news reports. We can't just watch all the social media interactions. We need Bravo to just pick up their fucking cameras, go back and show us what happens. Show us the aftermath of all of this crazy. They unfolded. did. They literally they did. I finally. Love that they, like within a day, they were like cameras up. We've got yep. it like uh, uh, and, and by the way, part of me was like, man, maybe they should just go into season 11 immediately because every but then I'm like, OK, maybe leave a couple months for. Tom to go to whatever wellness resort he's going to go to, yeah. uh, you know, not Mira. You know, I hear, by the way, uh, breaking news for your podcast. It's Miraval in the Berkshires. He is still at oh. a Miraval property, but oh, so he wasn't in Arizona. Well, he was going to be in Arizona and they did that and he switched it to the Berkshires. That is what well, I hate as a grown man. Do you guys hate as a grown man saying tea? I hate spilling tea. Spilling tea. But suppo yeah. We don't supposedly like that. that is tea. I, I um, dropped, I dropped that line. Everyone that never feels good coming out of no. my mouth. 
<laughs> I, I feel like, what have I become? Like, what is, this is so, I'm an older man. What is, what have I become? Like, this is, this is a pro become a product of my environment, but I think yeah, we can all share in that. Like that we've all as straight dudes in this space and like Shooter and I have accepted fully, like we're all in and we're excited for what's next, but there is that moment where you kind of look in the mirror and you go, this is my life now. I'm okay with it. I'm thrilled to be here. Oh. Like we're very, <laughs> very grateful that we have this opportunity, but like my life, my whole entire life has been consumed by Bravo and <laughs> spilling fucking tea. <laughs> no, I'm I, like, Yeah, you're right. Like I am so thrilled, but like I always say, like if I had told my younger self that the, you know, podcasts weren't exist, didn't exist when I was younger. Like, you know, the fact that I get to do this, like I've always loved these shows, even before there was even an idea of a podcast. So it was always funny that it's like, holy crap, this is what I'm doing. Like that thing that I dearly love, that was my private, like, it wasn't like my ex and me getting into it together. It was like, I personally like these shows. And, and how funny is it that the thing that I love so much now I'm able to actually do as my full-time job. And it's never lost on me, but it is so confusing. Even yeah. my dad will be like, wait, what's going on? Like the, <laughs> I'll try to make him, I'll try to make him watch a Vanderpump rules episode. And you know, he'll make, he'll make some kind of interesting observations, but sometimes if I make him watch a housewives episode, he's like, what, what, what did we do? What did we do something what wrong, man? Like, what, was there like, what, what happened? Like, no, 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 he, he's amazing, but it is funny because it is so bizarre. Do you wait, this is the question for you guys. Do you ever feel like interlopers sometimes? Because when I started, I felt like all of my good friends were um, uh, gay men and women and just women in general. And this was like, this is their thing a lot of the times. So I'm very aware of who I am in this space. Do you guys feel the same way sometimes? Because I'm always like, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to ever be in the top of this. I just want to be part of the conversation because I know sometimes I feel like an interloper. Yeah, no, we definitely do. And we're always reminded of that through our comments because Steele and I will have a segment called Rose and Thorn where we'll go through the nicest comments that we get and the worst oh, comments that we get. Oh. And the latter oh. aspect of that is stay in your lane, straight guy. And they, like, they call us like <laughs> cishet bros. By the way, I don't want to be a straight guy. This is not my choice. Like I really like do, like I don't want to spread that around. Like, 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 by the way, I know I'll get a comment from this. I'm like, wow, I didn't know you were straight. I still get those on a daily basis. I had somebody in my DMs, like the first year I was doing this, wanting to set me up with their son, who was a gay man. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not gay, but like- <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was beyond flattered. Like yeah, nobody sure. else was 100%. trying to set me up with anybody. Yeah. No, but no, we, we wait, 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 wait. By the way, really interesting choice to keep the mustache after Scandal Ball. I, I, had that, I thought you would I shave it, it off. I thought Howie Mandel no. would shave that. Somebody actually, we were on a live uh, a week or two ago and they were talking about Sandoval's mustache, but it got lost in all the comments. So all I saw was, I can't believe he he has that mustache. It's ridiculous. And I thought they were talking about me and I got very offended. <laughs> yeah, he got and then I, I had to look he, in the mirror afterwards and be like, so hard. <laughs> maybe I do need to shave this thing or I just need to just weather the storm <laughs> and get through it. Yeah, to his credit, he's been a stash guy for a long time. Yeah. So like Sandoval... <laughs> arguably stole the stash from shooter but yeah. he yeah. has gotten a lot of shit for it. no i mean i love the thing about the clapbacks though because like sometimes if i read the wrong comment on the wrong day and i don't even like i just assume it's negative i will go i've lately gone like i just have so much going on i'll go ballistic you know and then they'll be <laughs> like i didn't even wait that wasn't even about that and i was like oh so sorry i'm so sorry i just because normal people aren't used to having this many opinions thrown at them. You, right, know what, right. you know what? Like, it's so interesting to get used. You never get used to that. I think. I no, don't think really. so either. Like we're still getting used to like all of the opinions and everything being thrown at us. Shooters. Usually that's the funny thing about him kind of coming at that person. He's usually like the voice of reason. Like he's really calm. He never gets rattled. I'm the opposite. He'll text me sometimes because I'll get into like little battles on like Instagram or TikTok or something. Like someone will say something, I'll clap back just sarcastically trying to be funny. Then they'll come back at me and then I get mad and I'll comment back. And now there's like five comments in a row. And then I get a text from Shoot, like, dude, knock it off. I'm like, ah, shit, you're right. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it really is. I've just had to start and I never thought I would be this person, but I just now like i've started just blocking people because i'm like i don't have the time to actually get into it the way i would want to get into it because 
because I'm trying to understand all sides. But at the end of the day, I can only go by my own opinion and what I feel and what these shows show me. And like, I think, you know, it's definitely, I, I definitely agree with my opinion a lot. So it's hard when people will just want to take that down. And I think that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a byproduct of what we're talking about. Even with the housewives, we're part of the social media circus that goes along with these shows. And it's such a great tool, but at the same time, it can be so, um, scary and annoying and like Daunting, it could really yeah. bring up wild emotions yeah no i agree i think that you know you said it kind of perfectly earlier we want to be part of it we're not trying to take over we're not trying to step on toes like this is just something that we both kind of fell into because of our significant others and then began to really enjoy it so like our approach is always to be part of the conversation add our opinion add our two cents or whatever but not to instigate not to like take over anything we just we enjoy it. It's fun. It's funny. So hearing you say that, like we completely understand, but let's get into it a little bit. We, um, when we started this show, we had no idea what the fuck we were doing. And I came up with an idea forever ago called tagline freestyle. And essentially I'm going to play the housewives music over my phone into the microphone because my soundboard is not working the right way. You get to come up with your own tagline. If you are on a housewives show. Okay. So you can okay, listen perfect. through once you get to listen through it once. And then you got to come up with whatever you're going to come up with. Do you want shooter to go first? I'm just listening to the music or I'm listening to, I'm just listening to the housewives music. Yeah. It's just, I got okay. the instrumental and it's uh hold on. I'll pull it up right now. I feel like a SoundCloud rapper. This is amazing. You are. You got to <laughs> come are. up with a SoundCloud yeah, rapper name too, though. So <laughs> start working on that. Here we go. Here's the sound. I've heard this. I know, yeah. <laughs> Beverly Hills. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's your preview. Are yeah. you ready? You, you got it? it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah. In three, two, one. I've got a mouth for sin and a body for lounging. <laughs> I guess that's good. That's Wait, really like cool. like Erica Jane's Vegas residence residency, I'll be closed in three weeks. <laughs> it's too too soon, too soon. That's incredible. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, shooter, you up? Ready? Yep, hit it. If you try to gaslight the gaslighter, you're gonna end up on E. <laughs> 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 See, I should have went first because I, I can't compete. Yeah. I got to turn down my thing, too. Uh, all right. Do, 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 do. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right, here we go. I'm going to try. Um, oh, shit, I closed out of it. Here we go. I might have played in the minor leagues, but I'm a big league shit stir. Oh, you can't say shit. Yeah, you can't curse on these <laughs> I things, can't man. curse. Fuck. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Wait, uh, why can't you curse? In yeah, the tagline yeah, on TV? Show. Oh, yeah, you're right. Show. I may be, oh, okay. well, I mean, this isn't, I mean, I think they could just bleep it out in the moment. That's true. All right, one more try. Uh, they, my name is Steel because I come with the hard facts. <laughs> <laughs> not bad <laughs> by the way this is really what happens when three dudes get together and uh, i mean this is <laughs> i could just I this is kind of what happened like this, this. is we this is how do this shit and I got for an hour and a half yeah we, we just <laughs> spent time at like with our girlfriends and wives just hanging out and then just start talking about all this shit as men do all right no that's yeah, that, that, that was the i was always for i would go over to my guy events back in the day and i would end up talking to their wives and girlfriends because they were always <laughs> talking about the stuff that i actually knew stuff about that's too funny all right well let's dive in a little bit um our main focus is going to be summer house in jersey but there is obviously a very large lightning bolt shaped elephant in this room so we've all been going through it scandal has been going on for 16 years i think at this point yep but yeah where were you how did you feel and what was your reaction when the news broke <laughs> <laughs> well i mean listen it was a dark day no i was i was i was rehab i had the knee injury and i was at a rehab to with a trainer trying to do like some knee exercises and work other parts of my body as everything's slowly falling apart as i get older and i remember getting a push alert from tmz 
And I immediately didn't believe it. And I know, I, you know, I know them personally a little bit. And, and so I honestly, in fact, I was at Coachella with them last year with Ariana and Sheena, all those people. So I knew that. So I just didn't believe it. In fact, then I, I was like, oh, dude, and the trainer guy knows what I do. So he's like, oh, I get it. You know, and I got <laughs> on and I saw DJ James Kennedy had made an Instagram post immediately pushing the TMZ thing. And I was so confused because I was like, dude, they have really done everything for DJ James Kennedy. They've always spoken highly of him, even in in off camera, even in just personal conversations I've had. So I was like, why the F are you doing this? Like, wait, you know, and then, then I was told from other sources that like, oh, this actually is true. And it re I was, it, it takes a lot these days to shock me anymore in regards to this stuff. And I was, I was shocked. I would have told you it, you were, I would have, I would have said, I just did not see that. And for it to be Raquel, Rachel, Ratchet, whatever we're calling her, <laughs> for it to be that, and for it to be that long of a time. And that's the thing that still will reignite some kind of anger because I always say this, and this is like so weird, but as a dude, I actually looked up to Tom Zandoval because I said, here's a dude that's not cheating on his, his lady. He's, you know, she lets him go out there and be, let, let his freak flag fly, be all weird. And I'm like, I'm weird. I like to do the, you know, like I'm a weird dude like that. To me, I really envied him going out and doing things that everybody said was stupid, but eventually he, you know, put so much passion in them that people were like, okay, I, you know, like the band started looking good to me. I was like, you know what? I like cover tunes. Like I was so, I was personally kind of just, I was really, it really floored me. I was like, I went through such a range of emotions for somebody that this has nothing to do with, like all of us. But I think it also reignited a lot of passion in reality show and Bravo lovers because we realized that this show really flies and reality shows really fly when real relationships are involved. I mean, even like Summer House with Danielle and Lindsay, you see that when we have real relationships and that's why Jersey sometimes doesn't work because there's a lot of fake and phony stuff happening in relationships that don't really exist on the outside world. But this felt so real and true and such a betrayal that, I, I mean, it, that's why I think we are still talking about it. Yeah, no, that's, that, yeah. that's really well put, honestly. And that's one of those things that like, we all remember where we were when we got the news and I took it a little differently. I was so numb to it when it popped off and I'm like, I, what, what happened? What, why? And then I just like went back to what I was doing and then I stopped and I'm like, holy shit. Like, what are the ramifications of this? Like, what are they going to do with all this information? How are they going to get back to it? Because I don't want to read this. Like I said earlier, through the fucking headlines, I want to see it unfold in front of me. I don't want to have to wait until Bravo con for this to actually pop off. So I, it, it is wild that, that's kind of how it played out. And now we're just kind of seeing everything kind of grouped together. And it's, it's so funny because everybody's got opinions on the whole thing. Everybody says what they would have done or what they should have done. And to see like a resort, like uh Miraval going after it, like everybody's <laughs> yeah. getting their piece at this. Everybody's point. Like, wait, listen, if it's you, so funny. Like, if, if you're going to use like influencer deals and stuff like that, ex expect everything around you then to use you as well. And yeah. I call it the Vanderpump economy is that now it's like the thriller video where we're seeing zombies from Vanderpump, you know, coming out to dance with Michael because, <laughs> you know, it's like, the, you know, we have Jax, we have Dodie, we have everybody coming back in. I mean, Billy Lee got a little spotlight this, yep. this week, you know, so all all of these people are coming out of the woodworks. And what I think is fascinating is that none of these people, uh, it's not shame, but none of these people have the foresight to let go like, oh my God, we've done um, very similar things. And, you know, like, yep. it's like Jax, I mean, the only thing I want to hear from Jax is as a fellow cheater, this is how I think he's handled this <laughs> yeah, way. You know, yeah. like as somebody that's cheated a lot in my day, but he never does that. And that's what I would love to hear of like, listen, I have a similar mindset or I had at one point about women and this is what I would do in my lion's situation. Like, I think he really does have such a story to tell if he would actually tell the truth. That's a good point. I actually completely agree. We've we've gone after Lala quite a bit in the past few weeks just because of all the hypocrisy I've been seeing and the mean girl <laughs> shit. And like, in retrospect, yeah, she was given to... Rachel, who had done this horrible thing, but she didn't know about any of this shit at the no, time. Was she it lucked out. out? 
She yeah, lucked I know. out by design. Like if, like I always say, if like we were watching this, if none of this happened and we just watched this season, Lala would not have had a good season. Lala is very like that's why it's like some of these people should be kissing Sandoval's balls because like they actually are able to make T-shirt money off of it. They're able to actually make their own storylines kind of seem fascinating. They're booked by all of these sponsors now. People want a piece of them, and they had two seasons where that was not the case. Nope. Everybody had written Vanderpump Rules off. I mean, I was the only one that was like not the only one. I was one of the only people that were like, I'm going down with this ship. I'll watch it till the bitter end. But I did was very aware that I thought the end was coming. And this now has reignited the show in such a way that people are like going back and watching the show for the first time. And that's, yeah. I love that as a Bravo fan of like, see, it's pretty good stuff, right? This yeah. is really good stuff to talk about. Not to mention that's all the other people that haven't watched BPR in the past that are like, I got to know what's going on. Like this was such big news in the entertainment industry, not even just Bravo, that you have people who never watched any Bravo show before. Like, what can you can you give me the the tea, if you will, steal <laughs> on what's going on with Sandoval? Like, who the fuck are you? Like, I know that you don't watch any Bravo, but you know what's going on, and oh, they'll go back and start oh, to watch it. And it's like, that's oh, the great people, oh, the, the, the the famous people all of a sudden acting like they care, or they'll you know, like oh, I yeah. love the other podcasters and creators. Like, I've never watched uh, Vanderpump, but I need some heat. I need to get into this, you know. And it's like fucking Howie Mandel. You know? Yeah, yeah, see, Howie Mandel. See, this great. is okay. Okay, as fellow men, this is what I hate about men, and I hate to like bash <laughs> men, but it's like, why can we never take the loss? Why can we never admit, like, you know what? That was a pretty big moment for the Howie Mandel show. I didn't realize it at the time, but you know what? Now I really wish I had done a little research because I think I could have given him a little pushback, but still be loving. Like the fact that he stood up for a bad interview that was ill prepared. It's like I know people. That's all I need. No. I don't want to tune into somebody that just knows people and doesn't do any research. I want somebody that respects the actual person that's there enough to look at all sides of the story and, and make it something bigger than just the Howie Mandel show. Like he seems, he said, Howie Mandel seems like Sheena? a great guy. What's yeah, the minute he yeah, said, who, who is Sheena? Sheena? I was like, what the fuck Dude, are we let doing here? Let the daughter here? do the full interview. But that's, that's why Sandoval did interview. that. That's exactly why he went on that show, because well, he yeah, knew obviously. that he wasn't going to get pushed to a limit that he wasn't comfortable with. He probably did that over the reunion taping. And obviously the last two weeks of filming, but he went to Howie Mandel because it's a safe space. And that's what he wanted to try to paint this picture for us that nobody fucking believes. But even with Sandoval, he till this day, he's like, you know, how dare Miravelle do this to me? You know, like it's like once again, you know what? Like you're you, just be quiet. You, you've that's done it. something really bad. Like, you know, for, for him to go on Howie and go, I don't know what the big deal is. The big deal, dude, is you painted yourself in a certain light as a certain type of male, the anti-Jax, if you will. And then you actually were the same, if not worse, because you were, you know, you had glee in having this affair. You took her to St. Louis a bunch of times to meet your friend. Like you did this all under her nose and you actually went into therapy already knowing you did not want to be in that relationship. So you literally did a more elaborate prank on Ariana, which she actually was keen to, and you assured her no. And that's just not how therapy works. So you went in and you use mental health against her and against yourself because and she was like oh she turned amazing in therapy what a beautiful girl i already knew i didn't want to be with her though you know it's like that's ridiculous and it's i don't insane. know what therapist would have but why can't you take why can't you take responsibility and i don't know why men in general we can't take responsibility for when we mess up because we do we mess up a lot and that's okay we're human but that part i agree with but the the eight months keeping this going that is bigger than just a oops well we're yeah, better my off bad. For it now like, like that's, that's what pissed me off with the whole thing is like and comparing him to Jax right the anti Jax if you will this is way worse because for all of Jax's flaws for all of his missteps and everything he at least owned it like he knew that he was Jax Taylor he would try to defend himself he'd get caught and it's like nah that's Jax and like he comes on now and he's talking about it. he's like yeah I was the villain that's who I was and like is he still that guy probably in there somewhere but with yeah. the sandoval thing and we talked about it last week on our podcast it's like in this interview in this interview with howie mandel you have one thing and one thing only to say i fucked up i'm a piece of shit i need to look in the mirror and figure out my life but i don't instead, know how my mind works sometimes i right, don't know but, like just be honest about that like it's but instead me. he goes i was worried that she was going to hurt herself like you don't throw out her dirty laundry on the air like that because now you're painting a picture that ariana is possibly going to do self-harm because you're leaving this relationship and you're not giving her the grace to like go out of this on her own terms you don't get to dictate 
how she feels or what she's going through or how her emotions affected this decision you were making. You fucked up. You've been in an affair for eight months. Whether you're trying to end it amicably or not is fucking irrelevant. But to also not have the foresight of going, you know what, I'm going to do it this way because this way that he chose to do it would really cause irreparably more harm than her self-harming. Like, you know what I did? Cause I was scared she would harm herself. I fucked her even harder. You know, like I really <laughs> yep. try to really screw with her mind. And like, that really is where it gets darker and darker. So the Howie, like, I don't know what the big deal is. Well, Howie, the big deal is this dude was so dark in his betrayal of this nine year relationship and and that's I mean that to me is what keeps us coming back for more on top of just people being completely hypocritical like DJ James Kennedy. It's like two people can be bad at once, folks. You know, DJ James yeah. Kennedy, fun. He's a great villain for you know if Jax isn't there, but he's also a wild. Like I don't I want him on the show. I want him on that team. But it is wild that there is really doesn't seem to be a lot of good guys in this situation. No. And it just highlights, like when you said Jack's calling himself a villain, it's like, even that was always funny to me because I always thought like, well, Jack's probably heard somebody say a show needs a villain. And he's like, that's it. That'll I'll be, because that I yeah, don't think Jack's sure. really thinks of himself as a villain. I think Jack's is like, you know, here's the deal. I played the villain. It's not the real me. When in the closer to reality, I think that was the real him. He just found a way to be able to kind of, explain it to make himself not actually admit potentially who he really is as a person you'll hide under the reality is uh, reality shows are reality until somebody does something bad and then they're all of a sudden like it's a tv show you gotta remember it's a tv yeah, show yeah <laughs> you know it's like we're doing it's a tv show that's the big excuse everybody goes to well, sorry you guys i just got like really hyped. No. this is what oh, no, we talk it. about i get really hyper this is why we're here, man. This is the whole point. We wanted to get, you know, your take on it. And um, I thought you meant in the on. world. I was like, wait, you think God, like we're here to do this? Is like, this you think is why like, we're a higher here. calling. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, that is a higher calling. <laughs> this is our purpose <laughs> in life. Yeah, now. This is... <laughs> I don't know how the fuck we got here, but here we are. But um, <laughs> let's move on because we could probably talk about Vanderpump for the rest of the show. Yeah, but no. Summer House and this was Shooter's baby. Shooter loved Summer House. It was his like original favorite show. Um, so I want to hear your take, and I'm sure he's going to chime in as well with, with like the state of Summer House. Before we dive into this week, like how did you feel about this season specifically? I mean, the state of the union with Summer House is that it is not good. Now, I do think this week and the week prior, we've started to see some really nice signs, but we're at a real crossroads in this show when, you know, you have the newbies come in with Sam, Gabby and, and Chris, poor Chris. Um, you have these new people coming in, but they're unfortunately coming in at a time where they're watching some wild behavior with everybody coming at Lindsay in this really bizarre way. I really like Kyle a lot and I really like Amanda, but it is interesting how it's all just Lindsay. So mm -hmm. these new people are literally slack jawed most of the time because it, that's that's everything the show is about. It should be called Lindsay House. And to me, it is like Jersey in a way of like, yeah. Okay. Another thing with uh, Teresa and Joey. Got it. Okay. I've done, you know, like you're like, I'm so, I'm so tired of this. And we saw it again in this week's episode, but it is fascinating because these are real relationships. The Kyle Carl relationship is very real. The Danielle Lindsay relationship is very real. So it is interesting. It's like at war with itself because we finally had a really good rager party. And yep. I'm a man of simple taste. I like to get, I like to see people get shit canned and fall into yep. a pool. I love it. Like I, if, but I don't, don't give me a studio 54s party where three people are there and they're like that makes me sad it makes me think how my life is sad this is sad everything's sad but if you show me a rager kyle's ripping off his thing and showing us his little dong with a cowboy hat like i'm all in no and it's his little woody because it, it, it was a woody it was a woody hat like from woody and toy story it's like his little woody oh <laughs> is that what he's it? going with <laughs> yeah you didn't get that <laughs> well you obviously really thought about it i didn't realize i, really, I, I, take I, I paused it so i could stare at it for like an extended <laughs> no, period of time I, listen and then i, I drew a picture with pencils <laughs> i said drop the link on the little dong hat i need one and he said you can get it at party city everybody out there listening but no it, it got better this week but i think it's so dark because i was already initially worried uh about carl 
and Lindsay coming into the summer house, because I think Carl's in this really interesting place with his sobriety where, you know, he's finding out really who he is still without these things. And I would imagine I've not gone through this myself, but I imagine there's a real wild readjustment to life where it probably feels like you're in cement a lot of the times of like, how do I have fun? How do I laugh? How do I act around booze? How do I act around pressured situations? On top of, it's it's seemingly obvious that Carl might not be really good at his job with Loverboy, but the fact of Kyle, the boss, saying that he potentially had a drug problem on television is insane to me. And I just am very confused, once again, with the hypocriticalness of Kyle uh, being like, oh, dude, this episode is like, man, I, I really love to see you and Lindsay together. I'm like, you have an all season. You yeah. literally went out of your way to say when real dicks and real bitches get, you know, like he all like it's always Kyle freaking out about that relationship or Paige or Amanda. And so it's wild then when, you know, Kyle's like. I really like you guys together. I'm like, it does not seem like that. I, I don't, I feel like we're missing a piece on Summer House. I feel like we don't see something of why everybody, like Lindsay's intense and all of that stuff, but I don't see why the fervor of the dislike. And also, yeah, like they've been together 10 months. They've known each other for uh, many years, Carl and Lindsay. I understand being scared of somebody paying $13,000 per month for an apartment. That's very, it was very scary to hear. But other than that, mind your business. Like everybody, like if anything, we should be focused on Paige and Craig's relationship for the love of God. Paige does not seem like she really wants to move forward with Craig and that if anybody questions Paige about anything, she defaults to tears. Yeah. But Lindsay has to take slings and arrows every week. Okay, And sorry. we're still not satisfied with that either. That's the worst part is we still want – it's the people that go against Lindsay all the time. They still want more. They feel like she's not being genuine in any moment. And we got a real genuine moment when she sat down to lunch with Amanda – and she actually showed emotion and Amanda was just completely shell-shocked. Like, well, oh, what do I do here? Like, I don't know what to do. Kyle's not here to tell me what to do. What am I supposed to like? It was brutal to watch, but we got to talk to Carl a couple of weeks ago just because I fired off a tweet about how shitty summer house is this year. And Carl took a little bit of offense to it. There was definitely a little snarkiness in there, but he said, I'd love to come on your podcast to discuss it. And he came on. We didn't leave the interview thinking like, all right, you know, Summer House is back. We're going to be okay. We're thinking about this differently. We told him fair and square, like, dude, if this continues and they're continuing to attack your girlfriend, your fiance, and there's nothing else going on, and these newbies can't really kind of get into the mix because they don't know what to do with these 40 year old people all screaming at each other, then the show's going to die. And lo and behold, we at least get like one or two parties out there and we get to see, yeah. thank God, like Corey comes back, who actually Corey the party. Saved I the never thought, season. Corey saved I the never season. thought in a million years that I'd be like, thank God, Corey Kiefer. Like I never yeah. thought in a million, like, and by the way, it has been a refreshing change of pace. Somebody that actually wants to be there. Somebody that, and, and I'm all for Sam and Corey because, and this is what I said this week. I was like, Here's the deal. Like, great. They seem like I love how Sam was describing Corey, you know, lets all those wild parts of her like thrive. And I think that's amazing. But at the same time, if you got if anybody's paying attention to Bravo right now, this is a relationship to invest in, because if you have not noticed men cheat on Bravo. So I hate to -uh. say it, eventually somewhere down the line, Corey's going to get caught in something. And if they're on a TV show, that is going to mean like that is like so yeah man invest in this relationship bravo i think it's very exciting if it works amazing if it doesn't yep. work really good for the show see i'm yep. always the optimist i always want things to be <laughs> how they appear like i'm always like come on like i'm rooting so hard for Corey and sam because i thought i like sam <clears throat> i think she's good for the I show sam, i think yeah. that yeah she's had a really good season even when the the episodes were boring as shit i still saw potential in her i was like okay i like her i like gabby she drives me insane especially with the astrology shit, but she's I a like great Gabby. character. She's a great she character. She's, but with she's the way Sam, out there. Yeah. With the Sam and Corey thing, when I see that having to hear Maya take it upon herself to check Sam about her talking too much was so inappropriate oh, and made me so dude, sad. Was... And then to watch her reaction. And then like Maya has no clue. Like you can't meet somebody and tell them that. Cause you don't know what they're dealing with. Sam has been insecure about this her entire life life and the first time you meet her you take it upon yourself to tell her that hey you're talking too much so especially for hear, the season she had the first season Maya, thank you yeah, where she crazy. had such issues and sierra that beautiful conversation they all had as a group but until then maya was having a really rough time and i think 
I taught, I, I did an interview with Sam where I told her, I was like, dude, that, that moment really broke my heart. And yeah. Sam stood up for Maya and said, listen, that is the only room in the house that there are not cameras there. She was doing this to try to do it away from things, but I'm like, why did she do it at all? Yeah. Why like, did she feel the need somebody, to, to don't step be over that line? Yeah. And oh, like that, that's why me. it would have floored anybody, anybody that if you hit the nail on the head about what you're insecure about and a stranger tells you that you're going to be like, fuck, like I'm really bad. So to hear her say, Corey likes me for all of my craziness, for being outgoing, for being loud, for being kind of nuts. And he's kind of reciprocating, like he's matching her energy. I was so happy. I was like, thank God she deserves that. You deserve to find somebody that can keep up with you. That's not like knocking you down because you're talking too much. Like you see their date clips. They're fucking wild. They're doing shots. They're Dude, dry humping on a chair. Way, like like, they took a picture every minute of their date. There was like yeah, 30 Polaroids. Like, yeah. I mean, they, they seem to be on the same level and I, uh, I'm totally all for that relationship. It's really exciting to think about the prospect of them actually dating for some reason. And that's kind of what we need to run to are things that actually kind of excite us. But I, I'm sorry, after Ariana and Tom, I'm done believing that everything's hunky dory with any relationship. Like I oh, know yeah. you, I'm glad you are still at the place where you want to believe in things. I don't believe in anything anymore. Like <laughs> I do not trust any of these people. Everybody is potentially horrible and we're just going to leave it at that until, until we're proven otherwise. That's probably the safer way to go. That's a fair assessment, yeah. but protect your but also the Carl interview that we, we, like, did he, because that's the other thing I was wondering with Carl now, because it, you know, when watching the show back himself, I just wonder, like, he can't even really enjoy watching the show. And I wonder where he thinks, besides financially, what he has to offer this show with his relationship. Because Carl is one of my favorite people. He's one of the only Bravo people that I think has actually shown us that people can change and that mm -hmm. people can work hard. And he has put that work in. But sometimes putting that work in might not be the most exciting thing on a television show, especially in the first couple of years of your sobriety. So I do wonder where Carl sees himself in the hierarchy of all of this, because, um, you know, I truly like him and not being on a reality show doesn't mean you're not a great person because Carl yeah. will remain an amazing person no matter what. Did, did he ever say where he sees this show going? Yeah. What yeah. Did you want to take it seal? Yeah. So he said multiple times, there's still meat on this bone there's still stuff to look forward to he kind of laid out the party so we knew what to expect in like the weeks coming he was like there's a big rager coming up there's a fight between me and Lindsay. he's leaning on the fact that there's more there with his relationship with Lindsay, and that we all need to kind of just give it time to develop is kind of what he was pointing his energy towards i guess so <laughs> i like it's like she hits me you guys she hits me yeah, really she hard. Beats the it's, very like, it's really it's so entertaining <laughs> but i i do think like what we saw this week and what we've seen a few times in the past couple of weeks if they try it maybe shift right like i enjoy watching their life in the city that was actually entertaining to me i don't mind watching them kind of bop around new york it seems like the party scene in, in the Hamptons is kind of dying out. So if you need to kind of pivot and show us their lives like week to week, maybe that's a direction you could go in. But it's hard to say, especially, you know, I'm five years, almost five years sober myself. So we talked about that a lot. And with that journey, and Carl talked about it a lot too, it's ever evolving, ever changing. Like each year is different with what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, just kind of it's a learning process. You kind of find yourself again, and it's going to be interesting to see just how the show affects that sobriety. Like, is it going to be a comfortable yes, place for yes. him? And if it's not like it, it's well within his right to pull out and be like, look, it's not right for me. Same thing. And with I hope he would do that. I, yeah. I, I hope I think he, would he would do that and not just for the paycheck stay there because he does have it. Like I will say when they said $13,000 a month apartment, I was like, I literally went to my calculator. I was like 13 times 12. I was like, <laughs> holy crap. Cause I don't ever want him to be stuck, stuck in that because I think his sobriety is so important to him. And I like, by the way, he was that guy that a couple of seasons ago when he was like, every day you got to start, you got to make your bed. And I was like, make bed like i made that my <laughs> thing too i was like god he goes drink water and i was like drink water i remember like this is like i have a to-do list every day and those two are on there and those are the carl radke method but i i really root for him and mm -hmm. i think like sometimes i see how unhealthy this is 
And that if he's so still, I mean, he's a couple of years potentially under his belt with sobriety, but you know, that still must be a really rocky thing when you're putting yourself directly in the eye of the tornado. And that tornado is Kyle cook, just getting shit housed every weekend, which I love to see, but I also love Carl's sobriety. Uh, but like, yeah, I love that scene of the housewarming in New York, but like in the city, if you're going to do that, do things like that, because the scenes in the city usually are just like, let's play tennis indoors. And I never yeah, know why I it's need, happening. Not that, not that. I like, They'll show us like 30 seconds. And I'm like, I don't, I believe, I trust that you work in the city. I don't need to see, like Chris is taking a photograph on a step. Yeah, like, why? Yeah, I don't need Chris. to see this. I love Chris. I have a weird yeah, so thing for Chris. I, I think he's entertaining. Chris, Chris is, a, Chris is, Chris is just dad jokes. He's just dad jokes and pouring liquor down women's mouths uh, yep. at a, at parties. Like you always need one, but the guy speaks in just dad jokes. And I, I want to know more. Like he's, like I wanted Alex to stay. I didn't even mind Alex from last season. Like uh, he, he, he like gr grilled, you know, ground Turkey. Great. But like give him two seasons at least to kind of see, I want to know what the casting directors saw in him that the show was not able to convey. And I think Chris is suffering a similar fate in a lot of ways. Cause I'm like, well, why, why are we not being shown more about Chris's life? Yeah. What, what are we, or, or and also that the, the idea I always talk about is that, People can pop in real life and be just like so amazing in real life. And then you put them on a camera and all of a sudden they lose that thing that makes them so magical in their real life. Part of it, yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It's not bad or good. It just some people just really pop on camera. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think that with regards to the show, there's two different things going on here. One, Bravo producers can't get out of their own way. They need a changing of the old guard. You can't have like Carl was pretty realistic about himself. And he even said, you know, if it gets too much for me, obviously I'm going to do what's best for myself. If the show is going in that direction, I'll have to part ways. Like he was realistic about that. He was still selling us on the show. So, you know, that doesn't get lost on us either. But Did he try they, to get you to invest in the show. He's like a timeshare. He's like, if you guys can spend fifty thousand dollars of your own yeah. money, I promise that we will. No, no, do no, it worked. We return. invested seventy five thousand dollars, yeah. and uh, we have seen zero returns. We actually, yeah. um, Louis also kicked in two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He's out two hundred fifty thousand. He sent a. Uh, I would like an Instagram to make you a part crying. of Rue La La. Yeah, Rue we're Rue La La. La, La. Bros. Yeah. But between that and the, like the producers trying to figure out what the hell to do, so they throw this Martha's Vineyard thing at us, and like maybe that'll be somewhat good because we don't know anybody there and then the other part the other part of it is the hamptons are cutting down on big parties they're cutting mm -hmm. down on filming at bars so we even said why don't you guys just go somewhere else go to montauk go to the jersey shore go somewhere else where everything's a little more free and you can have huge ragers all the time because let's be honest when it comes to summer house 80 percent of the time we want to watch you guys have a huge party the other 20%, we want a little bit more fun and maybe a little bit of drama mixing up. We just don't want the same bullshit of you guys attacking Lindsay all the time and then having these sad parties with like 15 people that ends up at like 11.30 p.m. and Kyle's drunk as shit by himself in the kitchen oh. eating cookies at 1 a.m. We but, don't want but, that wait, Then just make it that. I would. I will I will watch a one-man Kyle show. Like I love <laughs> when he eats cookie dough by himself. By I the way, Kyle cheat on your work. diets. Don't cheat on Amanda. That's like, I <laughs> yeah, like, do that. Let's move a little bit further. I just want to talk about two more things and then we can move on to Jersey, but Danielle, let's discuss Danielle because I have not enjoyed her once this season. I, I cannot understand for the life of me, this approach that she's taking with Lindsay. I don't get it. The only thing that makes sense to me is she's just simply projecting all of her own insecurities about her relationship with Robert onto them because if you really break it down she's like you guys are moving so fast and this and that you moved in with robert after two months second they're not really moving that fast that's why i get so confused they've known each other for what eight years and they've been very yeah. close during those years like it's not like they were acquaintances they were very very tight when carl's brother passed away the first person he talked to was Lindsay. like that's deep yeah. they have a deep connection so eight months to move in is not crazy to get engaged after 10 months is also not crazy because you're not you're not tying into the fact that they've known each other for this long. It's not really a new relationship. It's just a different type of relationship. So my whole take on I can't stand how she's going about it. I think it's all projection and I think she's having a horrible season. What's your take? She's my favorite character on Bravo, right? No, 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 no. Uh, no I think she, <laughs> so she, we're going to end the interview. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. been nice. Yeah, no, no, listen. 
we as the Bravo audience gassed her up for so many seasons of like, what an amazing friend. Because initially she was, you know, she, they kept her on the show, I think, for a couple of seasons just to have somebody for Lindsay to bounce off of because everybody still seasons ago was against Lindsay. So they had to have her have a friend. Now, we all said like, man, I would like a friend like Danielle. She does seem like an amazing friend. I was one of those people. I really empathize with Danielle in certain ways. And I think there's a little bit of what potentially is going on with Carl learning how to be a person again without alcohol or drugs. But the same thing with Danielle is she's learning to not be the person taking the back seat, and she's bad at it. She's bad at it. She's clumsy. She doesn't do it right. She's like, ah, ah, you know, it's just, it's that person where Lindsay is the person that's always been in the driver's seat. That's always been the established roles. And when you try to move past that in your thirties with such an established relationship, it is bound to feel so weird, so awkward, like you're moving in cement. And then on top of that, she has a relationship that she has grown to expect nothing from this man. And she still is okay with it. She expects nothing, but she sees this other relationship with two of her best friends and all they want to do is hang out. And she used to be one of those people that would hang out with them. So it's glaringly obvious because she doesn't get to hang out with her own boyfriend and the people she used to hang out with are like bumping uglies together now yep. sexually on top of being friends. And that must be really incredibly infuriating. And she doesn't even realize I don't think she even realizes it, you know, this is deep subconsciously what she's on, upset upset about. And then the mass, the, the horrible part of all of that, it's a perfect storm because it comes at a time where Paige and Amanda and all of these people just talk mad shit about Lindsay. So if you have this person already confused about her place in a friendship and you're finally, after many seasons of hearing it, you're finally starting to clearly hear it of like, you know, Paige of like, have you been, you know, has she ever been that good of a friend to you? All of these things must be bouncing around in her mind. And Lindsay is like, dude, I'm not doing anything different than I've ever done before. You know, like I'm not doing anything different. Do I think Lindsay could have been a little more less intense on the balcony at her apartment? Sure. Like, yeah. I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, let's just enjoy the, the housewarming, guess, but it's but reality. Point, television. Like I would be fucking fed up. I'm like, we squashed this. And like, now you have an attitude again. Like I, I would think I would have taken the same approach as Lindsay. It doesn't make sense to me that she's like, if you are in fact a best friend, if you are both of their best friends, then you should understand and be happy for them. You can have an opinion as a friend. You can obviously say like, Hey, maybe this is too quick. Once they give you a rebuttal, Hey, we're good. We're moving forward. You no longer need to chime in. You need to back the fuck off. Yeah. yeah but, I think, that, but, I think that Danielle I just has a hard time taking that responsibility too, because she says, some wild shit and then when Lindsay goes why would you even think like that she goes I don't I don't see anything wrong with what I'm talking about like I'm your best friend I'm allowed to tell you this your best friend's supposed to tell you if you're moving too fast it's like no you're not like that's not you're supposed to trust your best friend to make the right decision and then be there for them if they realize they made the wrong decision like she has it so twisted and she feels like she's right all the time it's just it's just tough to watch and I feel like it's one of those things that Bravo does that it's just dragging on for a little too long at this point well, but Lindsay also has that thing where it's like the Joe Pesci Goodfellas of like, you know, Lindsay is like, uh, funny how? How do you find yeah. me funny? So like, even in this situation of, in this situation, she's like, you know, she'll just point blank ask it. Why don't you like me and Carl? Why? And I'm like, no, we are, just drop it. Like, so I feel like there's like ego on both sides. Yeah. I feel Lindsay is definitely has the most, um, you know, has, has the most, has something to stand on really she's really kind of right i don't understand what's happening but it is funny how even in knowing that Lindsay is right she knows it herself she wants danielle to say it it's like yeah. relent say it say it say it <laughs> and even carl at the end though i thought it was disgusting that like i i hated that danielle like screamed when she said she like picking out a pillow ring. i was like, yeah, like dude you're like a baby now like this is yeah. wild why are you turning into this person when you've always been so down and cool and i'm all for Lindsay asking her how her day was more and like she did that you know but it, sure. it, it's really bummer to watch and i i mm -hmm. obviously i think this is an example where so many bad things have now been said on this show and in, in interviews that it's going to be very hard uh to come back from at this point i think yeah yeah no i agree and i think we can tie a bow on summer house with that and let's move on to uh to jersey um kind of a similar approach. What do you think about this season thus far? Um, 
uh, it's like one of the, it's one of the, you know, you come back from a school break and you get to see all your friends that you like and what new clothes they're, they're wearing and new haircuts. And then, you know, you find out some of those friends immediately go into the crap that you hated about them last year. <laughs> and you're like, oh, you're still hung up on that. And that's where I feel like we're at. Like, it's, you know, like, like oh, I yeah, find you're myself still an just asshole. dazing. <laughs> yeah. Like I find myself dazing off. Like, this is like, it's like Israel, Palestine. And like, I'm like, it doesn't seem like we're guys, you know, Melissa, I feel like she said even last night of like, I'm done. I'm just giving up on this. I just get I'm like you. I, I feel like we've I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I've heard this like eight years in a row. And like, I feel like at some point, Bravo just needs to be like, no, we actually are done with this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's just it, it is it, you're like we were talking about summer house in terms of like age and partying and th- stuff like that is that, you know, this show is being held hostage by Melissa and Teresa and joey and it is being held hostage completely so you have like even a couple of newbies that i actually like and we i'm so tired of this show like i i mean there's good moments like it's fun to watch him like chug guinness and stuff like that yeah that but was then to get right back no but to get right back into the same bs and then you're yeah. gonna like antonia antonia wasn't you know i'm like i don't give a rip like i honestly don't care anymore and i hate to sound harsh but it is I'm feeling like I'm watching the same scene in different locations again and again and again. And I I've got it at this point. I get it. Like I get it. I get what's going on. I don't care. I don't want you to make up. I don't care. I don't want anything to like Teresa. I hope you're happy with Louie. He seems like an interesting guy and <laughs> let's move on. Let's, I mean, there's other fascinating people in Jersey and thank you for your service. Yeah, no, I, I think that you, you make a lot of good points. I mean, that's pretty much how everybody feels, but I mean, specifically with like Teresa and like the newbies in this, the newbies have been a little bit better than, you know, we talked about the newbies with Summer House. The newbies in this have at least come into play and kind of mark their yes. territory and come back in the sand, whatever. But at the end of the day, when you look at the bigger picture, they're just adding more players to the existing teams. So there's nobody like no new storyline with these new people. There's no new thing. It's just the same shit over and over and over again. And we'd be okay if they could just come to terms with the fact that they will not be friends anymore or will not be family anymore. We'll be okay with that, Teresa and Joe. Like we've said that a thousand times. We just need a resolution. Even if that resolution is, I don't want to be involved with you anymore. Done. Good. Great. We're done. We could fucking move on. Instead, they just want to harp on it. And I want to know what your perspective is on this, because do you think that it's just the Gorgas stoking this fire? Or do you think that Teresa is just as culpable? I, I th- at this point, I think they're both culpable and they have been at, you know, individual times at this point, I even get confused. And that's where like, it kicks in that I actually now realize I don't care anymore. Yeah. At this point, I just don't care. And what's really going to have to happen here is that unfortunately Bravo is going to have to make a real tough decision and they're going to have to release some people. And I think those people are going to be Joey and Melissa. Now I don't like, I like Joey and Melissa. I, I, I find Joey hysterical. I think he's one of, he's one of my favorite housewives. Um, but <laughs> I, I think that, I think that it's like, if, if this show is going to be so held down by this, they need to remove it because they don't seem to be adults enough to remove it themselves. And also with Teresa, she is a legend, but you it's like, you know, there is, I always say it's like, you know, the synapses in the brain are not firing like a normal person's are. So you can't argue with her. You know, she doesn't take in things the way a normal person would. And I'm like, that's a, this is a legend, but you can't have a real argument or conversation with her because it seems like sometimes her mind just like shoots to a different direction. She sees red and you're not going to have Um, a thought out conversation. And I think that's part of the reason why she is such a star, but it is unfair then to have these storylines revolving around emotions and things like that. When I've seen the same emotion out of Teresa from season one onwards. It's like what I've talked about it a little bit in our previous episodes. I think what we see between both families, all right, the, the Louis Teresa's and the Gorgas, they're all so prideful that like they will not just bite the bullet and somebody just bend the knee to the other one. Like they can squash the shit so easily, like go to the wedding, shut the fuck up, move on, smooth it over. If you really want to be family again, then someone has to give, but neither one will because that's admitting defeat over this decade long shit show that we've been party to. I don't think we're ever going to have Teresa or Joe or Melissa be comfortable enough to be like, you know what? 
I'll go to the wedding or, you know what, you guys are right. Like, let's just fucking squash this and like be family and just move the fuck on. Like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. They have to get out of the room yeah. so that we could just take on a new storyline. Like that's the only way well, that this shows gets that it stays around and we don't have to make major cuts. Just get the fuck out of the way so that other people can get some spotlight. Like oddly well, enough. And I never thought that I'd say this, but Jen Aiden has finally stepped up and she's got a compelling storyline with family and going after Marge and all this shit. But the Marge stuff is just a byproduct of what Therese is doing with Marge. And the family stuff isn't as captivating because Bill's not as captivating. He just doesn't fucking say a word. So there's nothing going on there. It's just like they have nothing to play with. So they're just like redoing this old record over and over. And we're tired of it. What do you well, think? I also think what... it... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I just think the characters, it it also does a disservice to those other characters, like you said, of like Jen Aiden, sometimes, you know, since she is such a Teresa sycophant, she, you know, her own storyline sometimes gets muted because it gets clouded in the noise from the Teresa, Joey, Melissa stuff. Mm -hmm. So we don't really ever get to like, you're right. All of those things about Jen, which by the way, you were reminding me of, I'm like, yes, she does have these kind of all the building blocks, but I think being like, you know, calling up sides, like it's some Jersey civil war, uh, you know, is really, um, destructive to the overall product and to use another sports analogy you know at some point they're going like beverly hills you're gonna have to have a rebuilding season it might not be fun to watch but for the overall health of the show if you want this to keep going five years six years seven years at some point you're gonna have to let rena go at some point you're gonna have to let these people go because there are i trust me there are amazing women out there ready to rock like we just need to invest in those women and kind of let them shine like last night they had that one argument between danielle and um um, rachel what's that yeah, Rachel, Rachel sorry. Yeah. I was like tiny nose. Tiny, tiny, I call her, yeah. I call her, <laughs> we just nose. call her Fuda. Just Fuda. Fuda, yeah. No, but it's like they're ready to rock, man. They're ready to rock. And you saw at the table, you saw like Dolores and all that kind of just like, what is this? Like they weren't jumping in. It was just these two newbies going at it and going at it really uh, very entertaining, really wonderful. They both held their own, but it, it was, was the funny old to watch school the jersey. It, it like it reminded yeah. me like when she stands up and she's yelling across the table and like Fuda takes it from like a five and turns that shit up to 11. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is like let's rewind five this years and like that's be. Teresa like yeah. like I love yes. that like, like like scanning around the Irish bar the Irish restaurant to see their reactions like what the fuck is going on over there yeah I love that like that's great no. when it's yeah. not you know Teresa flipping out about something that Joe did when it's something else and something new and it has nothing to do with them that's great like that's what we want to watch so let them flourish and get the hell out of the way I will say though the jersey so the Jersey fans and anybody, you guys, if you're on Jersey, like on Twitter or anything like that, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you know, the, the people that are like really hardcore Jersey fans and Teresa and Melissa fans, it's like, they're like looking at us with Vanderpump rules and going like pussies. We've been dealing yeah. with this for years because <laughs> you want to see some really hardcore negativity get into the Jersey fan base. Yeah. Cause it is like, it scares me. Like it is, I will even be like, this isn't even like, I'll try to make like, just like silly memes and jokes and stuff. And like, sometimes they'll be cutting, but people on like Jersey, they'll be like, I'm going to straight up murder you. And I'm like, this is insane. Like it's we can't even agree as a Bravo audience that this is just past its expiration date, but we always have these amazing seasons with them that we can watch anytime we want on Peacock. But like overall, I always want to think about the overall health of the show. And I never want one housewife or house husband or whatever to be bigger than the show. I want yeah. always the show to be the thing. And, and then right now we're star gets four cre- people that think they're bigger than the show. Yeah. Like go back to the show. It's the real housewives of New Jersey or the real housewives of Salt Lake City. That's where all, all this magic stems from. But you're then doing yourself a disservice and not even leaving room for the possibility that there's like really amazing women out there that we have not met that are going to be in be- like amazing situations that are going to be like they're ready to rock and we don't know anything about them. How fun will that be for us to get to know new characters and new interactions with old characters that are still willing to play on the field. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm doing way too many sports things. I was trying no, to impress you guys. We love it. like, it's perfect. We're great. impressed. Okay. I'm, I'm floored. Language. It's like yeah. when you put on a boxing glove and yeah. you like, you know, do things It's like when you it. kick yeah. a touchdown and like, then throw a home run. Like it's, it's <laughs> awesome. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last thing, Jersey centric. And then we got some questions from the audience that we're going to yeah. run through. Um, Louie. 
All right. We, we went at the approach this season of giving Louis some grace to see he's claiming he's making <laughs> changes. He's yeah. Some grace to like, he's claiming he's changing. He's claiming that he's bettering himself X, Y, and Z. We wanted to see it play out before we jumped to any judgment. Now, a video was just released and we found out who that video was sent to what that video is about. We got kind of the inside scoop on it, but your no, thoughts, your, I was that the rule out the rule la video. The yeah. yeah rula-la when video. I sit out here in front of rule <laughs> la like, I mean, I worry about that dude. Like that is that he, he makes some of the most interesting solo videos or like videos with like, cause the other one in the, the summer, like remember the beach one when he was like with all the, his like men, the warriors, the warriors, warriors. the warriors. He's like, I would like to come home to you and marry you. And they're like, say it, say it, say it softer. Uh, Cause I love you. I love you. So I'm like, he just looks like he's come from the face of the sun and everybody's like, it looks like the warriors. Like it's the scariest video I've ever seen. But I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's he's great for TV. You just got to try to like contain it a, as little as possible so that he doesn't go too crazy. But it's like we talk about it all the time with Joey. Joey could just take a step back and be like, "Look at this fucking guy! Like he's nuts! Like let's let's just let no, him." But go. Joey has his own issues, so he can't yeah. do that. Like he, he, he can't just step back. Step back. Step back and let well, Louis bury himself, and he will. These videos yeah. keep coming up. That video was sent. He's saying the that same shit ago, in that right? video. Yeah, so he's saying the same shit in that video that we're seeing him say to Teresa, but he's allegedly changed, and this is him bettering himself. That's yep. why he's in touch with his emotions. We get a clip of this. This was to his ex fiance Vanessa. That's who this video was sent to. And so we see him saying the same exact shit to her that he's saying now to Teresa, but allegedly he's changed, so it doesn't make any sense. Well, so I've had Vanessa on my show and I loved Vanessa. I thought she, and, and what I, it's a very interesting thing. And I know you primarily have a female audience and so do, so do I. And I sometimes ask the audience, um, you know, like I don't understand sometimes certain aspects of uh, femininity, femininity and female relationships, but we always say to believe women, but at the same time, in this case, we're supposed to um, think that all of these women that have things spoken out against Louis are just liars. Like, I don't understand, uh, you know, when people are actually telling their stories, but no, believe women, but all of these women, complete liars. And I'm not saying all women just tell the truth, like, you know, like all of that, but there is a point where it's interesting when I'm like, they are sharing their experiences. And like you said, Louis will eventually potentially hang himself his yep. own way if we just let him go. But there is something to this. You can't have that many people say a very similar story about certain person's behavior and just have it all just be just like coincidence. And we saw it, Melissa Gorga. Melissa Gorga said this. And one of the things that I was like, wow, Melissa, that's actually right on was at one of the, uh, whose party was it? It was like one of the shore parties that Uh, Teresa and Luda's house. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. which was a sterile party, but- it was the one where Louis was like, I wear your grandpa's, I wear your dad's PJs <laughs> at night, which, which by the way, how dare you, Bravo, how dare you release that in a preview? And then they say it and Joey looks confused and then they just move on. I'm like, yeah. no, I want a full hour of the PJ comment. I want- It better come I'm back for the reunion. Sexted. If that doesn't come back for the reunion, I'm going to be livid. Well, like- I want to see him in the PJs. We can only talk about what we see. Yeah, I want to see what kind of PJs these are. <laughs> yeah. Like, But Melissa says- she said something in that episode where she says, uh, Louis really has this mask up where he's like, Teresa, listen to her. Teresa, listen to her. You That's know, he's like good. Teresa whisper. He's like Teresa whispering. And really, Teresa does listen to him. But then Melissa said something, but then you can see the mask fall off and you can see how angry he really is and how confused and potentially scared. And I think that's where that's exactly what it is, is that Louis is potentially playing the man that he really wants to be because who doesn't want to like, I want to be Carl. I want to be organized. I want to be all of these things, but this dude wants to be elevated. He wants to believe that there is a higher power and all of this stuff, but deep down inside his id is something completely different. And when that falls, He's like, you know, you saw him lose it a little bit of like, I can't, I can't, I got nothing to lose, he Joey. I got nothing to hand. lose, you know? <laughs> like, yes. He, he, he flips the switch and the anger comes out. And that's where you can see Shooter called it out, I think, three weeks ago. You get a peek behind the mask. You get to see, like, okay, yes. this Zen, all is well kind of guy. That's not who you are, bro. Like, we're seeing past the curtain, the real Louis. And look, we gave him grace to see if he could enact change. And we also said, you know, 
the role of a spouse is to sometimes check your spouse, whether that's a man or a woman, you have to say sometimes like, Hey, this is, you're coming on a little strong or Hey, like that's a bad look, not in like a, a accusatory way, but just to try to help them become a better person. So we were watching that early on, like, Oh, you know what? Maybe he is helping Teresa. Maybe she is getting better. And then you see the mask slip, like you said, and you're like, Oh, he's just a really fucking angry guy. Like this is kind of sketchy. <laughs> And also two things can be true at once too, is that he's a really angry guy. And also there's probably things that he really truly has helped Teresa with. You yeah. know, there are things that actually worked because the dude obviously has done a lot of work, but just because you do a lot of work and read a lot of things and go to a lot of therapy and stuff like that. Unfortunately, the frustrating part about all that is there's still that person inside you yeah. that you're trying to hold down and that you don't know why you're like this. But we have, you know, all of these firsthand accounts from women that that really say a certain type of behavior. So I would always love to believe that people can change as I get older. I realize more and more that that sometimes is not the case. You know, you're always going to be fighting that fight. And I think a bad place for Louis to be, once again, for people with extreme emotional uh, issues is to be on a reality television show. And that's why I will be interested because I think at the end of the day, Melissa and Joey aside, we all want Teresa to be happy. Like yeah. I, uh, uh, that aside, like, Oh my God, nobody, like she totally deserves happiness, but I don't know. The, the Louis relationship is something that I'll always have like a keen eye on reservations. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, we well, did. Well, we we figured it out. Let's. Uh, who's going to let Louie know? The problem. We, yeah, we, we send the voice. We know. Yeah. yeah. yeah you guys want to hop on him. an Instagram reel and we'll just like discuss it with them. <laughs> well, we'll we all cry. To... We'll be good. We can Wait. do that little thing where they're like, "You live up? in LA. I want to. I want to talk. We'll come about to the beach. We'll come to the beach. We'll yes. all take our shirts off and get in the water, and we'll have a warrior <laughs> moment. And we'll <laughs> shoot her. Talk to no shoot her. Talk to your wife. Talk no talk no talk to her softly. Yeah, shoot her. Tell her again. Her. You want to read? Yeah, wanna... no softer. Quit yelling. You're being mean now. Settle down. <laughs> now, Sorry. now Ryan, punch him. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Well, we got some questions from uh from our audience. Um, we're just gonna do like two or three, but yeah. Let's see. I always have a really hard time reading usernames. Um, so I'm going to do my best here to not crucify them. But um, from you Leans, oh, you can't talk to me. I was reading it. I <laughs> fucked me up. Sound it Lean... out. Oh, boy. <laughs> and now my screen just cut because I got a, what the hell is going on? Do you guys still see me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I can't see you. So I'm just going to keep Why are going. You nude? My... Oh, shit. <laughs> you can see that too. Um, yeah. All right. Let's just, I'm just going to keep going. From Lean's Eats, who will have the balls to bring Marge down? I, you know, I mean, I like, I like Margaret. I mean, like, I just don't know what bringing her down looks like because like, I mean, would you consider Marge as bad as Lisa Rinna was last season of just no. like, ah, you know, like I don't see her as that, like, what does that even mean or look like bringing her down? Because she doesn't seem to be, that's what I'm saying. Jersey is really lost in a lot of ways because the Marge thing is another thing where I'm like, I don't, I don't really have a lot of feelings about it. I, I, I like Margaret. I like her and Jen Fessler together. Um, but I also, I, I don't know. I just don't find her as deceptive as somebody like Elisa Rinna was, or I, I don't, I don't know. What do you guys, I really don't, I'm at a loss. I don't really think Honestly, I don't think that there's a way that she quote unquote goes down because she's always just going to be yelling whatever her point is and she's never yeah, going to lose an what? argument. So like, yeah. what do you expect? Do you expect her to lose all of her friends? Like she has no support left in the group. I just can't see that ever happening. And that's how I would describe like, bringing her down. Otherwise, like even if this shit that Jen just told Danielle about Melissa pops off, Marge is still going to scream and argue about her point that she wasn't the one who brought it to light anyway. So she's never going to lose the situation. I just don't think that it's ever going to happen. We just need to get to a different place. And it's right now, it's just not happening. So I, I don't know. Yeah. You guys are right. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the same question. Apparently a lot of people. Know that. Um, uh, follow right. up. Who's going to take follow Marge up. down? Who's going to take Marge down? Uh, from oh, fuck. From Max John, maybe the three is supposed to be an E. From Max June? There you go. From Max John three, you'll get it. Are you going to go to Erica's show in Vegas? Are you going to check out the residency? 
Me or you we're, guys? You. You. We're not. Yeah, we're definitely not. Uh, listen, I, I, this is going to be, well, I, I'm with you. I'm, I, it's, this is probably an unpopular opinion. I don't forget easily. I don't think uh, this is cute or fun. And I got to tell you, to begin with, I think there's a big misconception. She was like Lady Gaga before all of this. Like, I think there's she has a couple good bops, like totally. But like, I wouldn't, you know, like I've seen shows of hers before. I, this, this is a great deal for her. Um, a good for her for hanging in there long enough to get this residency. Um, also, you'll notice that BravoCon isn't announced on the residency because I think that'll obviously be announced later on. But I think they yeah. want to try to get as many Bravo fans to buy tickets for the actual residency. But I think obviously that'll be a part of BravoCon. But there's just not, uh, you know, if I got into it free, I don't even know if I would do it then. Um, I think that once again, this kind of like muddies the waters and actually what we should be paying attention to with Erica is that I don't find this a comeback story. I would rather a comeback story of a lot of her husband's victims and st stuff of that nature. I don't know. I never needed to see her get back to her same wealthy lifestyle. So I don't really know what I'm supposed to champion here of like, good, I hope you're rich again and spend money insanely bad. Like, I don't know what I'm like. I don't like her music enough and I'm a big music fan yeah. to ever see her live, but I guess good for her. And, and what a deal, whoever put that deal in place, what a great person, what, that, obviously a really good business person. So I'll say that positively. There you go. That was one nice thing about Erica Jane. That's that was a, that was a good. <laughs> but by the way, when, when you, when you guys answer. covered Beverly Hills, I like I was so tired. Oh, of like, God. I'm getting so much. That dinner. was people still yeah. talk about this. People refer to like Jersey as an ongoing season or like whatever other show that we're watching. There was no longer season in Bravo history than last year's Bravo. It Beverly took Hills. fucking two it was, it was years. Ugh. It was 19 episodes plus the reunion. And it Three. felt like. And yeah, no, three it was reunion four reunions, episodes. wasn't it? Oh, fuck. It See, was I four, blocked yeah. it out. Four part reunion. It was 23 and total episodes, and it spanned eight months. Like, it was, no, a Bravo, there was nothing longer. Bravo uh, tweeted, like, subtweeted at Love is Blind finale because it wasn't live. And they're yeah. like, at least we don't like make you dumb something about like love is like a knock on love is blind reunion. But I was like, no, but you do drag out your shows and Just your reunions for like a one month reunion. And a half. One yeah, like, reunion show yes. per show. There's no now, need now for VPR. Two VPR. Ever. I will watch three or four of them. That's true. Okay, but oh. you know Miami does not need three. Beverly Hills does not need four. Potomac didn't need three. Like it was just all ridiculous. No, it really tests. You know these shows will test the audience patience, mm -hmm. and you know it's like there's only so much and. If it's not the most like Vanderpump rules, and by the way, I only think they're getting three because they didn't really even get to talk about other things besides Scandaval. Yeah. But that is one. It's like, yeah, man, find a way to blow that out is with whatever footage you have. And they're so smart because if you have Peacock, they're going to add on to the reunion and the final episodes just on Peacock and not on Bravo to get people over there. But yeah, it's like it just really those reunions test your patience so mm -hmm. much. And you're so because you're just. And it's never like, there's only a couple good exchanges. It's never like this in-depth discussion. No. And then Andy will all be like, oh, well, moving on. And I'm like, no, <laughs> we're, no, no, no moving on. This, you know? is the, this is what we want to talk about. And they'll touch on that topic for like two minutes. They'll, they'll tease it for a month and then they'll touch on it for two fucking minutes. And then they move on to something stupid or to yep. a character that nobody cares about. They'll shift over to like Mia and like no one cares about Mia, but now we're talking about Mia and G Daddy and like their weird <laughs> sex relationship, which like I don't want to talk about anymore. Instead of focusing on like whatever the main storyline is for that season, like I think that with the Vanderpump reunion, we have a chance to maybe rectify some of that to kind of keep it pointed. Like, well, that kind of writes itself though. Like that's not going to be true. like Andy but and Bravo's hard work. That's just going to be like, all right, here's the elephant in the room. <laughs> have fun. We're not going to talk yeah. about right anything play, but that. See now, but see, that's where Andy does come into play is that like, you know, if Howie Mandel had that, he wouldn't know what the F he was doing. At yeah. least it's like, but I will say what I had heard, you know, firsthand was that they really didn't get to get to a lot of other things because everything led back to Scandaval. And it was really like, you know, they were out of there by 730 that night. And like, if you're like me, you remember like Andy on like reunion nights with like Beverly Hills and be like 1130, we're still here and we have one more segment to go. So I was bummed when I found out, like 730, but I guess it was just so intense that they were like, this is all we're going to get. There was get. a physical yeah. altercation. <clears throat> I think I thought that did the Toms go at it? Like that's the rumor I heard. Is no, that... I heard it was, no, it 
it was, well, supposedly it's DJ James Kennedy and Sandoval, but I, I do like know, that. Every time you say James Kennedy, it's DJ James. Kennedy. You it's got it. Oh, by the way, I've said that now. <laughs> I've said that for five years. I mean, since he's been, I've always said DJ James Kennedy, by the way, you guys would be perfect for guys night. Oh, I love uh, guys yeah. night so oh, yeah. much guys night. He this just doesn't want to have dinner with night. us. Yeah, no, I can't do dinner with these blokes, but I, you know, maybe a party or maybe Coachella or something <laughs> yeah, like that, but not dinner. No dinner with Ryan, these guys. Ryan and his big fat belly. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh fuck. Well, I think that wraps up the questions. I mean, Ryan, that was hysterical. I'm glad we finally got to link up. Yeah, it's man. Been- I, I feel like time means nothing anymore. So it feels like last week when I, you know, first knew about you guys, and I guess that's now been a year and a half or something. So congratulations <laughs> on all of your success. Like it is really, uh, it's it's awesome to watch you guys uh, flourish. And I am just so thankful that there are better straight men than me out there in the oh, Bravo universe. Uh, we're not. Um, we're that. definitely not better. <laughs> <laughs> but we and by the way, I it. want to tease the audience too that hopefully the, you guys are still down. But next week yeah. we're going to do part two of this conversation on my podcast. Yep. Uh, so bad it's good, and I think we'll have just as good enough, a good of time. Like there's so much going on in Bravo right now that it was like, oh, we could do this. I mean, isn't it so fun and easy to talk about this stuff? Like it's yeah. just, yeah. it's the Second best nature. part of my day. Yeah. 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 It just like flows off, and that's like I, I've kind of taken on this you know, I'll get like really amped up during the day or like I have a stressful day, like my actual stupid job, which hopefully we can stop with those soon. We're trying to get away from actually working. But like when I get to sit down with Shooter on like Wednesday night or Thursday, whenever we record, it's almost like a therapy session. I'm just like, and like throw it all against the wall and just like and you guys have each other to lean on too yeah yeah Yeah, like i love that you guys get to work like sometimes i will say i'll do these like really long solo recaps of like beverly hills or vanderpump and not to be all boohoo what was me because i choose to do all this stuff but it man sometimes it gets lonely man you're at like two in the morning like or like screaming about tom sandoval and you're like what the f am i even doing with my life realizing you have to edit this (laughs) after that and it's like when you do have guests on or when I, you know, it's like so nice to bounce off of. That's why I was like looking forward to this. Cause I was like, I don't have to edit this. I can just nope. go in and be an idiot. Yep. And this is exactly what I needed. So perfect. Thank you. That's what we're here for. That's a, yeah. you know, we can, we can start a, uh, a support group. The yeah. We'll start, a, we'll start a text group. Yeah. Please. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> All right. Well, like Ryan said, uh, we are going to be on his podcast next week for part two of this conversation. Um, I would imagine this will be a recurring thing throughout the year. This is a blast. Um, But do you have anything to plug anything you want to get out there? Well, I would say everybody listening to make sure to buy tickets to your live show in Philly next week. That is huge. And, And this is what I say on all podcasts and even mine is that I know it sounds silly, but if you're listening to this right now, do uh, us all a solid is if you haven't rated Bravo's five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, go do that. It's a really free, easy way to support the show or any show and do that for mine as well, you know, and if you don't like it, just move on. Like there's so many great podcasts out there that is like, there's a podcast for literally everyone right now, but that kind of support really helps because Um, even though we're really lucky in a lot of ways, we're still people that are trying to find our way and there's so many great options. So it really does help in placement on Apple podcasts and stuff like that. So consider doing that, but, um, yeah, so bad. It's good on YouTube, the podcast, the Instagram it's everywhere, but yeah, I'm around. Sweet. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Same with us. Thanks for playing. You're, we have this issue with plugs. We're not good at them. (laughs) We are. Oh, I hate, better. dude. It's like oh, the, yeah. like the wait till the very douche. end, and we're like, shit. Everybody already checked out. Yeah, no one's we, listening anymore, and then we're like, ah, oh, plug, fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there. I was. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah, I think right, you, you, I think you just have weird ears. Maybe that could be the issue. Yeah, I think it's an ear it's problem. My issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, like Ryan said, live show next week at thursday night at the city winery in philly make sure you get a ticket there's only a few left but we'd love to see you out there check out the so bad it's good with ryan bailey podcast all over every social podcast youtube give us a follow give us a rating and check in next week um on ryan's podcast you will hear us as we continue this um amazing conversation so ryan thanks man thanks for coming out thanks guys